two, one. All right, so welcome to this video on basically talking about the introduction to inverse of a function. And as you're watching these kind of grade 11 videos, um, eventually you're gonna run into these particular inverses. Now, what are they all about? Okay, so you see the symbol there, which is uh, f, and it looks like to the exponent of negative one. It's not an exponent. Uh, it is actually the designation for an inverse uh, of a function. So let's take a look and see um, what these are about. So if you have some input x and you have something happening, okay, so inside of this box, and then you have your output y, we're pretty familiar with this concept of, let's say if we had a table of values. So here, you know, if I drew a table of values for my inputs and outputs, now I'm gonna just randomly kind of scatter them in here. So in terms of these numbers that we will have. And so for our input, so here's my X, and then, you know, here's my Y. Let's say if I had an input of say negative one, you know, it would go into this box and then I would have an output of let's say three. If I had an input of let's say zero, it would go inside of this and I would get one. And then, you know, if I put in one, let's say I would get a seven out. So I have this designation between my inputs and outputs. And now my question is, hmm, well, that's interesting. Um, if I don't know what's happening inside of this box, and let's say maybe it is some kind of a, a function in there, some relationship between the X's and the Y's, then what if I wanted to be able to create let's say another magical box. So within here, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. So if I had this, I'm gonna shrink this a touch, all right, right here. And I said to myself, okay, well now, what if I wanted to reverse the process? So what if I had another box in here that would basically take my output that I got and magically somehow returned for me the input. So my input at the end would have been basically returned back to me. So I have an input coming in, something happens inside of here, I get an output, then it gets put into another magical box, and then voila, I get my input back. So I have basically created the inverse of what has been happening within here. So if it goes in this direction and I still continue with these table of values, which we're kind of used to in math, then how would this look like? Well, then this particular column right here, then basically this would have been my new kind of input. So here is my output Y, and that would have been my new input into this new magical box, and this X really would have been my new output. So I'm gonna kind of designate these a little bit differently. So let's call this, you know, Y1, and then this X, okay, so that I have in there is, is, what, is what I'm gonna try to get back. So if I continued this, you know, this table of values, and I made it, okay, as so, and I created it like this, then what I would have been doing is that for my new outputs that I have, I have my new inputs. So here's my output that I have and I'm now I'm only concentrating basically on this right here. So I'm concentrating just on this, okay? So what is happening there? Well, what's happening there, and I'm gonna call this my, you know, my new kind of input, that we're typically used to, okay? So it's top, typically we just are used to the input being an X. Let's put that as X, you know, kind of one. And my inputs are, well, it's a three, right? Okay, it's a one and it's a seven. And I would have noticed that, well, wait a minute, my output, my full output Y, so within here, so Y, well, Y is supposed to be simply just, okay, whatever this has returned. But I know that. Well, I know that because I've created this table of values and here are my corresponding actual inputs 
you know, for these outputs that I have. And what would happen is, okay, so then if this new input into this magical box was three, then it should return to me negative one if I really want my input back. If I have one, then it should return to me a zero. And if I had a seven, it should return back to me a one. So it just inverses, it just basically reverses of what has been done. So an inverse, okay, so in here, so my inverse, okay, of a function, of a function. Now, of course, there are many different functions. This is a very simple example with table of values, but an inverse of a function simply reverses whatever my actual function has done. And now in table of values, that's very easy and simple to try to be able to see because I already know my inputs. So that'd be like, okay, well, I can just correlate them back. And if you do this entire thing, so what happens is, so if you have your, let's say some relationship, so you have these boxes coming in and out like so, and now, so here is my input, okay, into this, goes into some box. Then I'm gonna try to reverse the whole process. And so what I will have is, I will have this entire thing, so this process which happens in here. So if you notice that what I have in here, here is my input X, and then here is my overall output Y. Well, if you just capture it by that pink box, and if this is my, okay, whatever is happening in here, so this is my f of x, okay, let's say it is some function, maybe it's just some relationship as well, it doesn't have to be a function. And then I try to reverse the process, and in here, the reverse, okay, we designate it with this kind of, it's not an exponent, it's just a designation for the inverse of what we have. And here is what's coming in to that. Then if you notice this relationship, if you didn't know what was happening in here, then really what you have is that your overall output is simply just equal to your input. And we are interested in these reverses of information. You can kind of think of it, like imagine if you were sending information through the internet and you wanna encrypt the message so nobody knows it, right? So you have basically a function that encrypts the message and that could be this right here, and it's being encrypted. And then the receiver, let's say maybe you're sending it to the bank or to your friend, okay? Then they have an inverse function because what they wanna know is they wanna know what the actual input was. So they create this inverse and the only two of you know, okay, the encryption kind of key method. And then you have, okay, everything on your return, what has actually been sent to you but people in between cannot really see what has happened. And that's what really is kind of the goal of these inverse functions long-term. When you're studying it in math, it's kind of boring and annoying, but at the end, you know, these inverse functions um, do serve quite a huge purpose in everyday life, especially now as we kind of live in the world of the internet. Now, what do we notice um, here from these table of values, okay, with these inverses. So what you will notice is, so originally what you have, okay, you had, so let's say we had negative one and three, so negative one, and your output was three, so I'm just kind of repeating what I'm seeing right here. And now, notice that what happened in your second, okay, so in your second composition here, right, just in that, to reverse it, um, look what happens. Well, your input now was actually your output, and then your new output is basically your input. And this is what is happening with all of these. So notice the second one, which was zero, one. Then here we had one, zero. And then the last one, which was one, seven, one, seven. Then what you had happening, if seven was coming in, one was coming out. So do you notice a pattern that happens? So notice if this is your X and this is your Y, the inverse on their inverse side, if you were kind of trying to plot this out, notice what we've done is we really just have swapped these. 
So we're swapping the inputs and the outputs, what we have. And the overall idea is that we wanna have our output, okay? So if this is our input, our output, we want it to be X. And if you were graphing this, now of course, if you graph Y is equal to X, then it's just basically a straight line with slope of one going through the origin. And if you would do that, so let me, for example, change the paper here. I'm gonna just kind of show you, okay? So what might happen. So here is this plot, and I'm gonna try to show to you so within here, in terms of the inverse, what happens overall. So we had negative one, zero, and one, and then three, one, seven. So that's what we had there. I'm just kind of peeking, just trying to see, and hopefully I have enough space here to, to graph this. So here is this magical line. Okay, I'm gonna do it in dots. So here is my line that I have, which really, Okay, is your, okay, so this line right here is your y is equal to, so y is equal to x. That's ultimately our goal, right? We have an input and we have an output and we want the output to actually be equal to our input. So that's our line right there. Now, if I plotted these, okay, so notice I'm gonna, if I plot these on the actual, x and y coordinate system here. So negative one is three. So negative one, three. So that's one point right here. Um, so that's this one. Then zero, one, that's right here. Zero, one. And then I had one, seven. So let's say one and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have these points right there. And now if I try to plot the opposite ones, Okay, so let's say if I now I try to plot these on, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a nice reflection. So three, negative one. So one, two, three, negative one. It's right here. Then I would have one, zero. So one and zero. So that's right there. And the last one is seven, one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. So that's right there. And if you have these, okay, so you will notice that there is a nice reflection among, okay, this line y is equal to x. So it looks like your inverse, okay, if you want it to plot, all you do is you really just are swapping um, your y and x, okay, to create this nice reflection, okay, so that you have. And now I'm going to show you this reflection, right? So it's a little bit hard to see, okay, when it's on an angle. But hopefully, so here, let me try to do it. I'm gonna rotate it around, all right, so that you can kind of see that line. Um, so there you have it. So notice that if I just kind of rotated it around, notice the nice, beautiful reflection now that we have between these all of these points. So these points right here, so this one reflects along with this one, okay? This one right here is gonna reflect along with that one. And then this one reflects along with that one, and it is reflecting among the line, okay, which is right there. So with an inverse, okay, if you were drawing it out and plotting it, you're gonna notice that this reflection is going to happen. Now, when you are doing it, of course, you know, you may not have this kind of nice little tool where you can just kind of go back and forth, okay, and rotate these around. So it's kind of going to look like this. So it's a little bit harder to see that reflection, but that's what you have. Now, in general, when you are working with these, okay, and I'm going to just kind of give you a few examples. What if you actually know the actual function? Can you find out what the inverse actually is? And is the inverse an actual function? Because sometimes the inverse may not be a function at all. And then, you know, it's problematic, okay? And if you were thinking of those encryptions it's in terms of sending things out, it has to have a very unique key so that you get the right information back, right? If you send information in, you encrypt it, someone on the other end wants to kind of take that encryption or, you know, de-encrypt the entire information and then get the result back. So you do want 
both the functions, okay? And ideally you want the inverse to also be a function. Now it doesn't have to be, um, you're gonna run into some inverses which are not functions, but then they really don't exist um, because they don't give you unique um, decoding as you might think of, think of it. So to start these off, when you are learning about these, typically, you know, you're gonna work with first, just get used to the inverse working with lines because lines we know okay so they have this y is equal to mx plus b we know that they are a function right so they have this particular format or you can write it in this format if you like in terms of a function so they have a slope and they have a y-intercept and what you would have is so if you were doing this okay so if your input in here that you would have is your x, all right? And let's put in, so some random, I'm just gonna kind of make it up. Let's say that my function f of x, okay, is equal to, let's say two x plus one. So we know this is a line, it's a straight line with slope two and then one. And now what we wanna be able to do is, we wanted to be able to say, well, can we find an inverse, okay, of this function so that we, Okay, have our input returned to us. So let's say if this was our actual encryption, you know, function, you know, can we now find the inverse, okay, of this and what is it? Okay, so here's the question mark. Now, when you're doing these inverses, you, if you have table of values, it's easy. You just swap the X and the Y. But what if someone gives you an actual function, like in this case, this, what do you do then? Well, to find the inverse, sure, you can graph it, right? You can graph it and then you can find the reflection of it. So that's one way, but that's a much harder way to do it. Another, which is probably an easier way, especially if you are just dealing with lines, then what you would do is you wanna reverse the process. So if our output, so if our output right here, so we have y is equal to 2x plus one. If you wanna reverse the process, what you do is now, you basically will try to reverse it and solve for x. So just like in the table of values, remember how you swapped x and y? So in this case, you can do the same thing. You can take your original, now you can swap the x and the y, so this would be your x. Now it's no longer really an x. So, you know, so I'll put a little kind of a, a, a bar here maybe, okay? And then this is your two y. So you've swapped these over. And now what you wanna do is you wanna be able to isolate, okay? And solve for your new y to find your inverse function. So that's not very hard to do. So I'm going to take this. So for example, we're gonna get this. I'm gonna move this over on the other side, which is going to give me this. And then finally, what I will have is, I'm gonna divide by two on both sides. So that's gonna give me x okay, over two minus one over two is equal to my y. Now, I'm gonna drop this little bar over here Okay, because if you were plotting it on exactly the same coordinate system, this would have been your inverse function. Okay, so this really is your inverse okay, of okay, the original function that you have. Okay, so it has now a slope of one over two and it has an intercept of negative one over two. Let's try to graph it so that you can see that it is actually the inverse, and you'll see that there will be a reflection along the line of y is equal to x, all right? So I'm gonna use decimals for that, so I'll be right back. So here's decimals, so I'm gonna do my original line, which was two x plus one. So that is this line right here, all right? Now, I'm going to plot y is equal to x, right? Because we wanna see if it's actually reflecting along that line. And then finally, I'm going to find, okay, the new, which was, I guess, um, x over 2. That was the slope. And it was negative um, 1 over 2, okay, 
And that was my inverse. So notice that it is actually reflected along that line y is equal to x. All right, so that's what you would actually notice. And to, or to find these inverses, indeed, what you would do is you simply take your original function. So in this case, we're just starting off with just lines. And then you basically reverse, you solve, okay, for the opposite side. Okay, so if you have y is equal to 2x plus 1, you're going to solve really for x, which is your new kind of um, output. And then you're going to get your inverse. Now, to test if an inverse function is actually a function, you know, you can, don't forget that it has to give you unique, okay, outputs. And that is done by that vertical test, okay, that you can see. So if you draw a line straight down, you know, you will notice that it only intersects at one point. So that green line there, it's still a line. And we know that lines are actually functions. Now, is it always true that inverses are actual functions? No, not necessarily. So here is an example that you have. So this was an example of finding an inverse with regards to a line, but this is another, also a line, right? What if somebody gave you um, as your line, just simply y is equal to, let's say five. Now this is a flat line, right? So you have a flat line, okay, the slope is zero. And now this line to try to find the inverse is problematic, right? Now I can certainly graph this and by graphing it, okay, so notice that for every single, okay, so what we would have, okay, is if you did graph or let's say a table of values for this, then what you would have is that for any input, okay, so if I have my table of values, for any input, so negative 1, 0, 1, my y is always 5. Now, in order to find the inverse, we know that we have to swap these, right? So my new, okay, kind of x and my new outputs that I would have, I would have to swap these. So what do you notice that what you would have is that for all your outputs, your input is always equal to five. Now, do we know a line like that? Yes, we do. We know that this, so from here, this would mean that this new line would have to be x is equal to five. And that's a vertical line, it's going straight up. So a straight flat line the inverse would have to be a vertical line, but a vertical line is not a function. And if it's not a function, therefore the inverse actually does not exist. Now, depending on who's teaching you, okay, and depending on what you're doing, if you're just interested in the inverse, you can say, okay, so the inverse will look like that. But the inverse, remember, it's not a function. And if it's not a function, Okay, then it's very difficult okay, to utilize these. Because imagine if you were trying to encrypt your messages and you were sending it over the internet, okay, and you're encrypting it. So you encrypted negative one, but it spits out five for you. And then zero spits out five. So you're sending all of these five through the internet and you send no other information. Then the person receiving it they can't distinguish. There's no key that they can have that are going to take these fives. How do they know that the first five was negative one, the second one was zero, and the third one was one? They don't know. And that's the problem if you find that an inverse is actually not a function. So typically, you know, we don't call them, okay, functions anymore. So that's the introduction that I have for you. Okay, and you know, you can think of these inverses, they're super useful to know and understand. And at least now, please remember that an inverse just simply reverses the process, okay, of the relation or the function. Okay, all right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.